Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Jay Pushkar. Mike Fenner has the night off. After dropping their last two games to Altoona, the Erie Seawolves look to get back in the win column against the curve on Friday night. One of the best spots at UPMC Park to catch a game is just on that left side of the field. No score in the top of the first. Brant Sitta finds a hole and sends one to left field. O'Neill Cruz scores from second. one nothing curve. Still in the first inning, Altoona threatening. But Jesus Rodriguez gets the strike out there. One of five Ks on the evening for the starting pitcher. Seawolves still trailing one to nothing in the third. Ryan Kreidler flares one to center field. The sack flies good enough to score Dylan Rosa. Game tied at one apiece. On to the top of the fifth. Jonah Davis at the plate. Hammers his fourth home run of the season. A no doubter to right. Breaking the tie with Altoona now leading two to one. Bottom of the sixth. Dylan Dingler. Off to a good start to his double-A career. Able to drive this one deep to center field. Tagging and scoring on the sack fly is Kreidler. And just like that, we are tied up at two apiece. Same score, bottom of the eighth now. A runner on for Spencer Torkelson. And he rockets one to left for his first home run as a Seawolf. And it comes in a huge way as that is a two-run shot. It gives the Seawolves a 4-2 lead. And that's how this one ends. It's Erie over Altoona 4-2. Game 5 of this six-game series will be on Saturday night. Major League action, a wild one between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Buckos leading 3-0 in the first and adding to it. Gregory Polanco with a towering blast to right. Pittsburgh leading 5-0 on Polanco's seventh of the season. Move to the sixth. Pirates leading 8-1 to one with the bases loaded. Key Brian Hayes doubles on a sharp liner to right field. All three runs will score. Buckos rolling 11-1. to one. Then the Indians woke up in a huge way. Top of the seventh, sacks pack for Cesar Hernandez. And he bombs a grand slam to center field. Cleveland now trailing 11-7. to seven. Top of the eighth, Rene Rivera singles to center field. Three runs will score on the play. And Cleveland... Pulling to within one run, and they are thinking about the ultimate comeback, but the Buckos would settle down in time as they would finally close the door on this one, and it's Pittsburgh winning on their home field in a crazy one, the final 11-10 over the Indians. Meanwhile, out west, it's the Los Angeles Angels leading Detroit 2 to nothing. The Angels with a run in the second, a run in the third so far in this one, including Taylor Ward's RBI double scoring Justin Upton in that third inning. High School Football District 10's North-South game being played at Greenville High School. North team leading 7 to nothing in the second half and on the move, Corey's Landon Weiss rips off the long run, setting up a first and goal situation. The North now knocking on the door offensively, same drive, and they go back to Weiss for the touchdown. The North now leading 14 to nothing. Next South possession, and they would turn it over as McDowell's Anthony Emling able to come up with the interception, able to step in the passing lane. It's the North over the South this evening, the final score, 14 to nothing. The 2021 EDGA Match Play Tournament resumed on Friday morning with second round matches. To Lawrence Park Golf Club we go. Players and spectators dealing with light rain and blustery conditions. Over on the par 5 15th, multiple match play champion. Ron Coleman taking on Tyler Kozad and Coleman rolling in the birdie putt with ease. Jump to the 17th now. Coleman with a chance to win the match by making the birdie and he does just that. Coleman advancing to the quarterfinals 2 and 1. Ryan Ferry facing Isaiah Swan. Ferry with a great read and nearly converts on the birdie opportunity. He would settle for par. He defeated Swan 2 up. Another great battle featured Drew Dimel versus Carter Hassenplug. Dimel making the par save putt on 16, that to win the hole. Over to the 17th now, Hassenplug with a solid, solid pitch shot from short yardage, knocking it to within a few feet. He would miss the birdie chance to extend the match, so Dimel just simply needs to make the par save, and he does so, and he eliminates Hassenplug 2 and 1. Staying on the 17th green, two-time runner-up of this tournament, Matt Bardo, has this long birdie chance, and he's able to lag this putt beautifully. He would make par and eventually defeat Ted Grassy two and one. 
Other winners in the second round included Alex Weir over TJ Mitchell, two and one. Dave Spitzer eliminated Mike Wolf, six and five, to reach the quarterfinals. In a match featuring Gannon teammates, Abe Holmes defeated Mark Majeski, five and four, while John Marriott completed the all Gannon side of the draw by advancing two and one. Highlights now from the quarterfinal matches Alex Weir facing Ron Coleman on the par four fourth. Weir has this scary chip shot, bad stance, downhill. Able to pull it off nicely, he saved par, eventually winning the match in 20 holes. Ryan Ferry taking on Dave Spitzer. After a brilliant second shot that hit the pin, he was able to settle for par there. He eventually defeats Spitzer one up. Over on the par four, excuse me, par four fifth, Abe Holmes taking on Drew Dimel. Holmes rolling in this birdie chance just off the fringe, nearly drops it in. He would advance by beating Dimel in 20 holes, staying on the fifth. John Marriott, excuse me, John Marriott taking on Matt Bardo. Marriott dropping in the birdie three, and he would advance two and one. So again, here are the results of the quarterfinal matches and what a round of golf it was in that round as Weir and Holmes advancing after playing extra holes. Ferry defeating Spitzer one up and Marriott beating Bardo two and one. So here's the schedule for Saturday's semifinals. It'll be Weir versus Ferry at 11.50 a.m., followed by Holmes and Marriott at noon. Then the final match will be on Sunday at Lawrence Park Golf Club.